Chapter 8 Unperson Death by a Thousand Paper Cuts Ling Chi Time Period Early Recovery Even before my drinking career ever began, I've always felt like I was different than everyone else. Not necessarily like a nerd or a freak, more like a mismatched thread in the social fabric. Maybe the torn one that gets snagged and pulled. Always thinking and emoting differently than my peers. Unable to conform to the cultural norms as seamlessly as most could. When I attempted to fit in, it felt uncomfortable, inauthentic. That's a lonely place to be. I still feel that way now sometimes. That people don't, and never will, understand me. How could they, when I barely understand myself? This makes me question my worth and inner compass. Once upon a time, I attempted to assume responsibility for my insanity, but I can no longer blame myself for the entirety of my dysfunction. It almost seems like a perfectly normal reaction to an inverted world where compliance is sculpted from manufactured chaos, brains are bent by indoctrinations, enslavement is cloaked with success, and lies are disguised as information. One where freedom is outlined by infinite statutes. Hate and indignation are a la carte. Entire populations view the landscape through digital blindfolds, and criminals dispense justice, where our instincts are systematically suppressed and exploited. Truth is derived from popularity, health is assassinated by its own industry, and open minds are riveted shut by mandate. Anyway, I value my time more than money, experiences over things, and service over praise. I need to be outdoors more than most. I get claustrophobic when locked inside unbarred workplace cells while my dreams flee from the fluorescent lighting. I need people around me who are unafraid to swim beneath the iceberg tips of presentation. I need to be shown that emotions are allowed. I need downtime to recharge from the sucking wires of expectation. To fast from the world regularly and not be viewed as lazy for it. What the hell is wrong with me? It's as if I'm an inside-out version of what society tells me how I'm supposed to be. The pressures to conform to these norms are enormous. It's as if I'm trying to escape some worldly heavy metal concert mosh pit while friends and family push me towards obtaining the American dream at all costs. Am I weak for not wanting it? For not wanting what everyone else wants? Am I forever an outcast for not wanting self-induced bondage to the things that decorate my stray from a natural state? Is it an abomination to want a counterspell for the proposed linear track of false securities? Can other people see the same things I do, the same trends, the same traps, the same ever-repeating cycles of history, the same brainwashing, the same contagion of our diseased obsession for receiving the proverbial whip to the back concealed as gold in our hands? Does it make anyone else nauseous to watch the branded brains drone about in their Pavlovian routines? Or is that just their truth, and I'm the delusional one? Is it acceptable to not have an identity defined by measurements, to not fit into a specific package at all, to be unique, part of a non-existent clique? I have never been told this was okay. For all these attacks on my individuality, I was willing to reach for anything to quiet the calamities of my mind, only to go insane anyway. Time period, present day and sober. It can get frustrating when we see social constructs for what they truly are. But we must refrain from our cleverness. Not everyone thinks the same way we do, and why should they? How boring would it be if everyone had the same opinions, tolerances, journeys, defects, and intelligences? The truth is, nobody's perfect, including you, me, us, the people around us, and especially humanity's social tendencies. It's one of the reasons why our species is so advanced, because we make the most mistakes. Ultimately, we need our tree of health watered by these teachers of chaos. If we install dams and choose to not drink from these fountains of flaws, we end up isolated and we wither into our own traps, our own distractions, and are swept away from the main goal. Why does what they do bother you anyway? Why are you focused on them and not us? If we are honest, we can notice these observations are nothing more than a mirror of our own insecurities. We notice them because they are not outside, but within. They paint a mural of our fears, our deficiencies, our indulgences, and our biases. But when we are in a healthy state, the mural changes. It gets prettier. When we can see with honest eyes, simultaneously looking inward and out, we quickly become humbled by the fact we are not clever at all. 
When we listen and accept other people's words without the intention of replying, debating, manipulating, or changing their perspective, we can then relate, connect, love, learn, and we no longer need to waste our willpower on trying to correct the paths of others with unsolicited directions. This goes the same for individual people and complex systems of control. We remember we are lost as well, wandering the boundaries of our current realm to draw a new map. The wisdom comes from refraining to tell others to go left when we are both lost in different mazes. Mazes designed by an intelligence we cannot begin to fathom because our mazes change whenever we shift our expectations. Where we once strive to exit the maze, we now request that the designer customize it. Our frustrations about how other people do their thing, whether we deem it to be incorrect or whether their actions affect our life or not, are simply distractions. Their life is not our hobby. Ours is. This is called self-evasion. If our attentional and energetic hands release our own wheel of wellness, our steering becomes misaligned and we veer off the street. The vehicle wants to pull toward the ditch if we're leaning out of our car door window attempting to put one of our hands on another person's wheel. Which is exactly what I'm trying to do now, but I assure you, it's cathartic. If we become overly consumed by other people's business, our vehicle can easily sway off and crash into a light pole. A light pole representing a bottle in our mouth because we could no longer tolerate people's shit. 